so let's um, talk about love being expressed in our lives. How many of you know that we need to worship God? Wait a minute. Men, how many of you know that it would be a good thing for your kids to see you worship God? Because a lot of ladies worship more openly because I believe that, no offense, but more emotional and and it's more in you to worship. And us men, we say that it ain't in our personality and, you know, and who's looking, you know, and all, all the stuff. So um, I'm weak if I uh, worship, but all that's a lie. So I asked myself the question, I asked myself, what is God's bottom line? What does God desire? What's God's plan? What's the bottom line to God's, what is he trying to accomplish? Now, I know none of y'all ask those kind of questions to yourself. Um, so, so then I asked the question this week, what does Satan desire? Here's my three talking points today. What was Satan's greatest desire? This is before the fall of man. What is Satan's greatest desire today? And what will be at the end of the world Satan's greatest desire? So those are the three talking points. Are you guys ready to jump into this thing? How many of you know that we need to worship the Lord God in him alone? Come on now. And, and, and let me just tell you something. There's nothing, men, there's nothing weak and there's nothing wrong with worshiping God. In fact, when, when you, and by the way, if you say you love someone, you express that love to them. And, and so if you say you love God, come on now, we need to see we need to see all men everywhere raise holy hands unto the Lord. That's what Paul said. I wish that all men would raise holy hands unto the Lord. So let's take a look at what was Satan's greatest desire. Uh, we'll start in Isaiah. I tell you what, let's, let's, there's a whole bunch. Um, let's, um, let's start, let's start in Isaiah and then we'll go to, um, Ezekiel 28. So Isaiah 14, starting at uh, chapter 14, verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken who? So what has Satan, what's he doing? He's weakening who? He's weakening the nations. So this is how it happened. This is how you got cut down. For you said in your heart, I, you know, when you start with I, you got a problem because we got to start with God. Come on now. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throng above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. Now, here's what I see in these scriptures. I see that Satan's desire is to be lifted up. He wants to be exalted. He wants to be God. He wants to be number one. 
Are y'all out there? So Satan's greatest desire has always been, I want to be number one. I want to be the high one. I want to be lifted up. Come on now, I'm, I'm talking to somebody in this place. I'm talking to Ricky Sinclair. Because let me tell you something, if you don't humble yourself, there is one that will. Because if I exalt myself, he will abase me. If I humble myself, he will exalt me. Shout somebody. It works just the opposite from the world. Um, so the desire of the devil, Satan, is, is that he wants to be lifted up. I will. Wants to be high. Wants to be worshipped. Well, look at me. Will means desire. I will. I desire. Are y'all out there? Ezekiel chapter 28, uh, and of course, verse 15 says that you'll be brought down to the pit. Come on now, how I many of you know Satan will go to hell? So, and I'm not going with him. So that is, that's one party that I'm not going to. By the way, it will not be any party in, in hell. That barbecue is one you want to miss. So... <laughs> So here we are, we jump over to uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse uh, 11. We'll start there. Here we go, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Now look, here's what I want you to always understand. That when we read the Bible, it is a spiritual book. There is oftentimes a dual meaning to the words in the Bible. In other words, it has a physical application as well as a spiritual application, right? Remember, we learned last week that the Bible's full of symbolism. And, and you guys, y'all got to go to rickysinclair.com and you got to watch these messages 10 times. You got to. You're never going to get it here. It's amazing you, start, you go online and you watch these things again. God's going to speak to your heart over and over and over. You know why I know he's going to speak to your heart? Because I ask God to speak to your hearts and my heart every time I stand in front of you. I, I say, God, I have nothing to give your people. And I'm asking you to speak to my heart and all of our hearts. Because if you don't speak, we've wasted all of our time and we... we it, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a bomb. In other words, nothing will happen if God doesn't speak. We wasted a bunch of time and I've wore y'all out and it, that ain't what we're doing. So, all right. So, so here's what the scripture says. The scripture says king of Tyrus, but as we read it, you'll, you'll see it has a dual meaning. We're talking about Lucifer. We're talking about Satan. And say unto him, thus says the Lord God, Thou sealeth up the sum. Um, in other words, you, you have like a perfect perfection. You're full of wisdom. You're perfect in beauty, describing uh, Satan. I know we were talking about Satan because uh, the king of Tyrus was never in the Garden of Eden. Thou has been in the Garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle. All of these have been your covering, the gold. They were the workmanship of your tabrets. Somebody said tabrets. And your pipes, leave it on this scripture, was prepared in you in the day that thou was created. Now, the reason why I want to put emphasis on tablets and pipes, because God created three types of instruments. Percussion instruments, winded instruments, and string instruments. These are the three types of instruments that God has created. He put all three of these in Satan. That's why we know that Satan actually 
ran God's worship services in heaven. Are y'all? Can we check the fingerprints of some music today and see who's been touching? I tell you what I used to listen to all the time. ACDC. I'm on the highway to hell. Wow, wow. Satan gets you. Literally, that's in the song. I used to sing that. I didn't even know what I was singing. I'm on the highway to hell. Satan gets you. I wonder who wrote that. Angus Young, you think? You think Angus Young wrote that? Or whoever wrote in their band? I, I never kept up with that too good. Wait, um, Pastor John, you got some? Oh, he was inspired, right? Uh, yeah, he was, but the problem is it was the wrong spirit. Uh, by the way, I can be inspired by the wrong spirit. Are y'all out there? All right. So you understand then that there are three functions of the church. Y'all ready? We pray when we come together. We worship and we preach the word. There are three ruling archangels. Satan rules over worship. He was created with the tabrets and the pipes um, and, and, um, and the, uh, the string instruments. Um, it, it's the, the vials is actually what the Hebrew English word is, but it's like a violin or a guitar. It, it actually means in the Hebrew a stringed instrument. The winded instruments like a flute or like a, a, harmonic, a, a harmonica are, are winded instruments instruments um so so he was created with these three different types of musical instruments god established three archangels over the world lucifer satan was the worship leader for heaven michael is the ruler over answered prayer. Gabriel is the ruler over the word of God. When we come into church, somebody, uh, I'm preaching better than y'all are shouting, I'm telling you right now. I'm preaching better than y'all are amen and uh, Miss Kathy. So, so when we come into church, we worship, we pray, and we release the word of God. Are y'all are y'all with me? So we we see the number three in these arenas as we think about what's really going on. Now, Satan was the ruler over worship, but it went to his head. As beautiful as he was and as pretty as he was, better watch it, man. Uh, the problem in your life might not be failure, it might be success. It might be you reaching a certain level and thinking yourself something that you are not. Your biggest enemy might be prosperity. Your biggest enemy might be success where you reach a certain level in your life and you get comfortable and you start compromising. Because here comes Lucifer and he takes a look at all these beautiful stones that he was created and he takes a look at his gifts that God gave him with the musical instruments and some kind of way it went to his head. And he thought, you know what? I'm so great, I should be God himself. I'm so great, I should be worshiped. I should be lifted up. And the Bible said when iniquity, you know what iniquity is? Iniquity is a sin of the heart. Iniquity is slander. 
It's malice. It's ill will towards someone in your own heart. Listen, iniquity is a judgment against someone else that you judge in your own heart against them. And that's what he did. The Bible says you were perfect in all your ways till iniquity was found in your heart. I will exalt myself above the most high. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north. I will be like the most high. And when you said the fifth I, you got fired in heaven. I heard the voice of Jesus that said, I beheld Satan like lightning coming out of the sky. I'm telling you, disciples, don't rejoice because demons are subject unto you in my name, but rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm telling you right now, I saw the day, said Jesus, when Satan himself, when he lifted himself up, when he wanted worship for himself, when he tried to take God's place, he was casted out of heaven, fired. The Bible said he came down to earth, a fallen angel. In fact, he convinced a third of God's angelic uh, angels to follow him and rebel against God. Are y'all out there? That's the demons we're fighting today. Satan comes down to uh, planet earth and he never changed his mission. He wanted worship. And so what he did was he immediately came against the will of God. He came against the uh, purpose of God for all of our lives. He, he He tempted Adam and Eve. He deceived. The Bible said that the serpent was more cunning than all the beasts of the earth. In other words, the Satan was the chief demonic ruler of the demonic kingdom of the beast, the demons. He was more cunning. And so he told Eve, has God said that you won't, you shall not eat of this tree? And y'all all know the story. And she said, yeah, well, we can eat of all the other ones except this one, just one. God always keeps one. I tithe the 10%. He always keeps one for himself because he's tested you. He's doing something in you. It's working out selfishness and greediness in you. Teaching you to be a giver and not a taker. Come on, shout. I'm about to run around this place. Long story short, Eve took a bite of the fruit that God had said not to eat. And as a result, she gave dominion. The dominion authority that was given to her and Adam by God, when they rebelled and obeyed Satan and disobeyed God, it actually put Satan in charge. In fact, the law of Genesis said everything produces after its kind. So so when they became a a sinner, they produced sinners. And that's why when you um, have your grandchildren and you take them to GameStop like I did yesterday, brother, and... um, You buy him some extra games and he's got more than one and you say, brother, now you've got extra. You want to share with your sister? No, I don't want to share. I said, brother, (laughs) we are givers and not takers. Yes, we have extra. And yes, we want to share. And by the way, the sister is just the same because you ask her if she wants to share. And what does she say? <laughs> she says, let me stand up. Let me see the head. <laughs> does, she says, no, I don't want to share. <laughs> so I'm wondering, where did you learn? Uh, where did you get that sin nature? Where did you get that rebellion from? Where did you get that stinginess and that selfishness from? All of you are saying, well, that's kids. Uh, we, I've already, I, I'm not selfish. It ain't about me. Well, I'm going to prove it that it is about all of y'all. You ready? You ever take a, 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 a group picture and you're in the picture? 
Who's the first person you look for in the group picture? No, you didn't look for yourself, I know. And then when you see that your hair wasn't right, you tell me, give me that picture. That picture's no good. What? Because you don't think you look right? Now all the other people don't look right. Are y'all alive? All right, all right. I mean, you know you got to be born again. Come on. So that was Satan's desire. Satan's desire is for us to lift him up, to worship him, to make him number one and not God. Are y'all out there? All right, now, I'm, I'm preaching good. I think I'm preaching good. All right. So, so we, we, we see the eye wheels. Come on now, we're getting over the eye wheel. We, um, we, we see children that are born into the world. They have a sin nature, which is a rule of action for them to sin. It's a rebellious nature. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, Marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus was so full of flesh. He said, well, uh, I'm 6'3", 240 pounds. How am I going to get in my mother's womb again? Jesus said, are you a ruler of Israel and you can't understand these things? He says, that which is of the flesh is of the flesh and that which is of the spirit is of the spirit. I'm telling you right now, you got to be born in the name of Jesus and receive the Holy Ghost to overpower the nature of rebellion of the devil, a satanic nature that all of us are born with. Shout somebody, you got to get saved. Today, if you're not born again, you need the Holy Ghost, man. If not, the ruler of this world, the devil, will rule your life. His desire will be manifested in your life rather than the desire of God. So we got to take back the ground that we lost. Shout somebody. I was looking at um, me and um, Brian were talking about a scripture just before my Bible study here at 10 o'clock in the Welcome Center this morning. And um, we got on the scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. And it says, Wherefore in time past you walked according to the course of the, of the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. How many of you know that we can't be operating any longer under the the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of disobedience, the same spirit, which is Satan's spirit that disobeyed God and was fired from heaven. And guess where he came? Down to earth where we live. Woe unto you inhabitants of the earth. Um, Because the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows his time is but for a short. Somebody shout in this place. We're talking about worshiping God. We're talking about expressing our love to God. We are not ashamed of the glory of God. We're not ashamed of God. We will lift these shovels up in the middle of the world. We will give God glory and honor and praise with all of our heart, for he is worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down to the same. His name is worthy to be praised. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel my shout coming on. Now, I want y'all to know I was raised in an African-American church, all right? So I'm just letting you know. That, um, and I was like one of the only white boys there. Brother for, didn't have a liquor rhythm. For they years. They used to say, don't look at him during worship. He'll throw you off. Be quiet. I'm a white boy. All right. So praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. They taught me the word of God. Amen. That's that. And they taught me how to shout for the glory of God. So I, I, I love that rhythm that my brothers have. Praise the Lord. My sisters. And I might not have it, but I got the Holy Ghost. Come on now. All right. So here's our talking points. Man, we're good on time today. What was Satan's greatest desire? We saw that in the Garden of Eden. We saw that in heaven when he was kicked out. 
He always wants to exalt himself. How many of you know that we're living for God and not ourselves? If, if we're lifting anybody up, we're lifting the Lord up. We're worshiping him and giving him all the glory. All right, so now what is Satan's greatest desire? I just took this from Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Um, and y'all remember, we, we've been talking about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness a good bit. We've hit it in different ways. But one of the temptations, do you remember the temptation? Uh, the devil takes Jesus up into an exceeding high mountain, and the devil gave Jesus a vision. Somebody said, I didn't know the devil could give you a vision. I didn't know he could give you a dream. You just keep living, you'll see. And show Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory thereof. And he said to Jesus, all of these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. What is the greatest desire of the devil? That we worship him. Now, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Come on now. He can go ahead and disguise himself as an angel of light all he wants, shout somebody, and we are not ignorant of his devices. And thank God for Jesus. Come on now. The second Adam, the first Adam failed for us. The second Adam won for us, shout somebody. That's why we call Jesus the second Adam, the Bible does. Then said Jesus unto Satan, get thee behind me, get away from me, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you worship. All right, now this is what I want to get from that. If the devil came to Jesus and wanted Jesus Christ to bow down and worship him, would you say that that's his greatest desire in the world? How many of you know that we ain't giving him that desire? Come on, somebody shout in this place. We ain't giving him that desire. So he wants to be first. And um, I've got a story about, um, about a man that came to church. And during the worship service, this, this is him. This is what he did. And there's people around him worshiping and giving God glory. Some of them are doing this. Praise the Lord. And he's just like this. And the pastor asked him, he said, well, is there a reason why you don't express your love to God? Come on now, I'm talking about worship. I'm talking about if you love someone, you got to express it. Come on now. Your wife says you got to like show me. You got to need the action. And he said, um, he says, I'm not a real outgoing man and I um, express my worship in different ways from a lot of those folks, and that's just my personality. And then about a month later, they went to a Dallas Cowboys football game. And the pastor looked over at that guy that wasn't outgoing. And he was hollering, he was screaming, get it, go! Over a pig crossing a chalk line. He was shouting and hollered. And he thought, that's your personality, huh? Listen, sometimes we got it backwards. We can go hoop and holler for a, a pig crossing a chalk line lose our mind and raise our hands. It's a touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And yet when we come in the presence of God, 
the one who we owe everything to. We can't get them shovels up. Come on now. We feel awkward. Uh, we, uh, who's somebody? Man, come on now. I'm telling you now. You can worship God. You can lift those hands. If you can lift your hands up for a touchdown, come on now. If you can shout for a pig crossing a chalk line, you can shout for the glory of God. Don't let the devil deceive you. I heard another story of two preachers that were preaching out of town. And they were preaching at a small church where they wouldn't get in a whole lot. So they were staying in a hotel room and there was a hotel room that had a a double bed in it because they literally wasn't getting a lot. So they had to stay in the same room. And one of the preachers went into the bathroom and was taking a shower and getting ready for bed. And when he came out of the bathroom, he looked over at the other preacher that was sitting on the bed and he was, he was facing the wall and his back was to the other preacher that just got out of the bathroom. And this is what he had. You know I love you more. No, I love you more. No, you don't love me as much as I love, I love you more. Now, I know none of you've ever. And when the other preacher got on the other side of me, saw, no, I love you more. No, you you don't love me as much as I love you more, baby. (laughs) And when your man gets home, you better watch out, girl. You better watch out, girl. When your man gets home, you better watch out. And about that time, y'all better. Zach was holding his head down, my parents. Then he kissed mom in church in front of everybody. Shoot, man. That woman, as much as she, I put her through, man, she needs a kiss. Jesus. And when, when the preacher got, he had his back, they was telling his wife, he had his back to the preacher that came out of the bathroom. And when he got up close, he saw him and he knew that that preacher had heard him talking like that to his woman. And he says, you get, get back there. You, you, you better not tell anybody what I said. You. Listen, can I tell you that if you love someone, you got to express your love. Man, there ain't nothing wrong with a husband and a wife loving each other more than the other one. Come on now. There's nothing wrong with coming into the house of God and giving God all the glory and all the honor. Come on now. Just shame the devil. Praise the Lord. Don't give the devil any worship that belongs to your great God. Come on. Shout somebody in this place. I said it, man, men, your kids need to see you worship God. My grandkids need to understand why we take the Lord's Supper, man. There's nothing wrong with sitting down and saying, hey, listen, the reason why we give Jesus Christ all the worship and all the glory and all the honor is because there was a day that your grandfather was in bondage. There was a day that your grandfather was not a good guy, man. There was a day your grandfather was caught up in the drugs and alcohol and then they met Jesus Christ the bondage breaker and delivered me and set me free and that's the reason why we come into the house of God that's the reason why your grandfather will dance in front of the whole doggone world because of what God has done in my life and I'm going to tell the whole world that he is worthy he's worthy to receive all the glory and all the honor and all the praise and I don't care who you are or where you're at when I 
when I think about who God is and what he's done in my life, I'm going to shout. I'm going to praise. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you're looking, what you think you're looking at. I don't care. I'll make a fool out of myself. I love what David told Micah. She said, you really look like a dignified king today, half naked, out dancing in front of all the people of Israel. David said, yeah. He said, you think that was something, girl? He says, and I will the more dance for the glory of God. Listen, the Ark of the Covenant that represents the presence of God has now come back to us. Listen, I'm so excited about the presence of God that I don't care what you think. I don't care what, what you say. I'm going to keep shouting. I'm going to keep dancing. I don't care what young handmaid, what good looking girl on the side is looking. I'm telling you right now, when it comes to God, I'm all for him. I'm all all out for God. I'm going to give him the glory. Here's what happened to Micah. She became barren from that day forward. She never produced any children. Can I tell you when you start worshiping, when you start praising with all your heart, Come on now, I believe some fruit's going to come forth from your life. I believe not only you're going to have kids, but I believe things are going to start to manifest. The favor and blessing of God's going to cause increase in every aspect, in every area of your life. Somebody shout in this place because we're going to worship the great God of heaven and earth. So what was Satan's greatest desire? That people would worship him. What is Satan's greatest desire? That you will take your eyes off of God today and, and go towards the world. Compromise. No, you go after God with everything that's in you. Shout! And number three, we're closing. What will be Satan's desire at the end of the world? And I really started reading Revelations over the last week. And man, I'm telling you what, y'all know I'm not the conspiracy theorist guy. I'm, I'm a realist. But doggone it, this world is weird right now. Man, this wokeness and this politically correct stuff. And look, man, when you can't even tell somebody what's really in your heart because you might hurt their little feelings. <sighs> when you can't say what's really in your heart, you don't have the freedom of speech in America. Man, when you see people's minds that are blinded, whew, man, fussing and fighting, all the stuff in our political uh, leadership nowadays. And man, I'm going to tell you all right now, I'm registered and independent. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm independent because I got to talk to all of y'all. So I, I'm for you. But the thing is, 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 we are one nation under God. We're not red or blue. If you live in America, you have your opinion and stuff and your beliefs, and that's all right because you're free to be who you are and believe what you want to believe, but you can't jam your beliefs down my throat, and you can't get mad if I don't agree with you and don't have your same opinion. Because I have the right as a free mortal agent to have my own opinion, my own personality, my own individuality. I have the right to be Ricky Sinclair and I have the right to be able to voice what I really believe. Whether it hurts your feelings or not, and if it does hurt your feelings, you gotta get over your little feels. Got to. How immature is that? You ain't strong enough to be able to handle a dis little disagreement. What in the heck? Where are you? What kind of doggone people are we raising up that if you hear something that you don't agree with, you can't handle it? I'm saying grow up. 
And that's where we're at in this nation. So I, I don't, that's, that's, that's my little two cents. And I believe the devil's behind that. And I believe that's ending towards Satan's greatest desire. What will be Satan's desire? Let's look at it. Revelation 13. Y'all ready? And they, the people in the earth, worship the dragon which gave power. Now, y'all remember Revelation 12, 9 says the dragon, that serpent, that devil. Um, so we know that the dragon is Satan, that serpent, the devil. From Revelation 12, 9. And he gave power unto the beast. And this is not a bear or a tiger. Beast in the Bible oftentimes means demons. Are y'all out there? That's why the serpent in Genesis 3, 1 was more cunning than all the beast. Satan, when he tempted Jesus Christ, was in the wilderness with the wild beast. Those are demons. Come on now, you got to think spiritual. Shout somebody. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. The dragon is Satan. And they worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? And who is able to make war with him? And all that dwelled upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Somebody shout and say that we ain't worshiping Satan. We're worshiping God. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Come on, shout somebody. Now, and I got to thinking about what does the picture look like at the end of the world? Gabriel is hanging out with Jesus because they're friends. They're good buddies. The beast says, who is able to make war with me? And Jesus looks over at Gabriel and says, Gabe? What did he say? Oh, shut, shut up. <laughs> and Gabe says, Lord, they said that he's more powerful than anybody in the world. And Jesus says, come on, shout somebody. Gabe, grab my sword. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel chills on me right now. Gabe, get my sword. And that's where we'll pick it up. In Revelations chapter 19, come on now, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, shout somebody. It's talking about the end of the world. Come on now as we know it. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. How many of you serving the faithful one and the true one? And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. Huh. What did he say, Gabe? Who is able to make war with the beast? Sat on my horse. Get my sword. Verse 12, did we got it? All right, y'all got 12. Let me look at it. Y'all get your Bibles Turn there. Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, 12 through 19. So um, Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. Verse 11 through 19. If you're there, say there. All right, y'all beat me, so I'm not there. All right, here we go. All right, so Revelation 10. No, I'm not. Revelation 19, 11. All right, here we go. All right, verse 12. Talking about Jesus getting on that white horse. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Talking about Jesus. How many of you know that he's focused? What did that, what did the beast say? Who's able to make war? I mean, you know that Jesus' eyes all of a sudden became fire, shout somebody. And on his head were many crowns. How I many you know victory? Come on now. You are not victims, you're victors in Jesus Christ. 
And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. I don't know what that name is, but we don't know it. Only he himself knows it. And he was clothed with a vesture that was dipped in blood. Come on, the power of the blood of Jesus. And his name is called the Word of God. Shout! And the armies which were in heaven followed, that's us, followed him upon the white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Come on, we're clean because Jesus made us clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword. Shout somebody again. And that with it he shall smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of almighty God, beast. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name that is written, King of Kings. I'm coming to a close. Come on now. And Lord of of lords and I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God shout somebody somebody better give God some glory in this place Come on, stand to your feet. Let me just pray for you. I'll tell you who's able to make war against the beast, who's able to make war against every satanic demon that comes against you, that oppresses you, that attacks you. His name is Jesus Christ because he's King of kings and Lord of lords. And the reason why I raise my hands and worship God no matter who's looking, no matter who's watching is because God is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun. He's worthy to be glorified and magnified. I don't lift the devil up because I, uh, because that's the devil's desire. I lift God up. I exalt God. I honor him. Let's pray. Pray this. Say, Lord, I exalt you. I honor you. I worship you. I glorify you. I magnify you. I exalt you, oh great God. With all my heart, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I cherish you. I magnify you. I glorify you. I bless the great God of heaven and earth. Now close your eyes for a second. Hold your hands up. Watch. Watch his presence and his spirit come into your heart. Because when you worship him, you get him. He inhabits the praises of his people. When you worship God, you get him. You get his presence. One of the keys in life is to overcome is worship and praise to God. And when you do that, you release God's power. It destroys the work of darkness. Father, I thank you for the greatest family in the entire world. I feel so honored to know each one of them. I thank you, Lord, that our family is growing across the world, God. Millions of people are being influenced by all of our teachings that you've given us. By you speaking to us, Lord, and we speaking what you put in our heart, millions of people are being touched by you, Lord. We pray you'll keep speaking to us. You'll keep moving in our hearts and lives, Lord. You'll keep teaching us your will and your purpose so we can be all that you've called us to be. Now bless your people today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the MPC family, Lord. Bless all of them now. Cause increase in favor and blessing in the name of Jesus. And if you agree with that, shout with me. Say amen. Have a, have a great, great day. We love all of you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Express your love to God.